my name is uh, Francesco Pavone. I'm the director of the European Laboratory for Lorinia Spectroscopy in Florence. And uh, in particular, I'm working in the field of uh, biophotonics, so imaging uh, biological samples uh, with laser light. The use of uh, laser to visualize uh, molecules, but also cells uh, organizing tissues, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to visualize also bigger organs, like the brain. And the main feature of the brain, which is uh, absolutely fascinating, is that you put together the morphology, the architecture, with the functionality. So our goal uh, with the optical imaging is exactly understand how the brain uh, computes, how the brain uh, remembers, how the brain is able of abstract reasonings and so on, but also how the pathologies develop into the brain by putting together uh, features and characteristics uh, both for um, uh, morphology and uh, functionality. The imaging we are using, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it's by means of uh, the exploitment of the interaction of uh, laser with matter and uh, the possibility to penetrate well deep into the brain uh, by means of nonlinear effects, by means of clearing the brain, make the brain transparent. For example, of course, this is an ex vivo approach. And, uh, and then we can uh, see the brain exactly with the same principle of the computer-assisted tomography. In other words, you have the brain, you slice the brain with a slice of light, and then you see perpendicularly uh, the brain, then you move the, your slice, you rotate the brain. So it's exactly the same principle of the computer-assisted tomography. Instead of using radiation, you use photons, but then you obtain uh, a tomographic image with a resolution which is 1,000 times higher than uh, the nuclear magnetic resonance. One millimeter cube, the resolution of a nu nuclear magnetic resonance is a million of neurons in one millimeter cube. Here we have a resolution of one micron. Okay, So it's a volume which is one billion times less, so we have only one cell and for the first time we can understand how certain kind of pathology are also related to the world of a single cell, which makes a huge difference. Think about Alzheimer. I mean, when you discover the Alzheimer and you see that the amyloid plaques are invading the brain, that's the final stage of the sickness. But maybe when you are 30, 40 years before, your single neuron is starting not to work properly. And from there, there is a cascade of processes that brings, after 40 years, to the big massive damage into the brain. So having the capability to see the morphology of even single cells, open up new fields in medicine, new fields in pharmacology, new kind of treatment. Our aim is also trying to overlap those kind of images. And so the way we do is in a sort of a new cloud research method. In other words, with the fiber optics, we transfer the data from our institutes to an high performing uh, computing center. And then people from all over the world, they are uploading, you know, they are tools on this high performance computing. They are working in remote on these data. So they are counting cells or they are navigating into the brain or they are associating that kind of brain with atlases existing atlases uh, related to certain kind of pathology. If you make uh, a photograph of the brain with uh, a resolution which is very high, you have a tremendous amount of memory that you have to manage. Uh, a brain from uh, a mouse can have about a few terabytes of image that you have to treat, and the brain for a man may have a memory amount of a few petabytes. The other one is understand how the brain can uh, compute with such a low amount of power. Think about that uh, a human brain can compute, can storage memories, can perform abstract reasoning with a power of about 20 watts, which is uh, one billion times less than a supercomputer that would do the same task. 
So neuromorphic computing, it's uh, trying to understand how neuron computes and create a new class of electronics, neuromorphic, which makes the same computation with one billion times less energy. The impact is not only biology, the impact is also energy. But impact is also managing distributed system because the brain is able to manage a distributed systems. It's a network where nodes are intelligence, the neurons. So if we understand how the brains manage distributed systems, then we can create algorithms inspired to connectomics, the connections maps of the brain, to uh, manage other kind of distributed systems, power grids, for example. Human Brain Project is not only a, a grouping all different countries in Europe, all different knowledge, but uh, establishing a new way of doing research, a new way of collaborating with a common platform for everybody, with a big aim to put all the knowledge, the human knowledge of the brain, in a unique computer, and everybody can access to this computer, and at the end understand how the brain works, simulate the brain, and before the 2020 create a new computer which is uh, simulating the brain.